What's up YouTube, Christo here. Got another video for you. Uh, gonna do just random seven inches from my collection. Literally just filmed my Melvin's and Ken Mode vinyl collection, so be sure to check that out. I've got a few cool Ken Mode records in there and some uh, more recent, not really rare, but some pretty good Melvin's records too, so be sure to check that video out. So this is literally just my Others Box 1 and Others Box 2, which means that it's just pretty much artists that I don't have more than one record of. I'm just going to do these literally at random. I don't even know what order they're going to be. Hopefully nothing's appeared in any other of my videos. It shouldn't have because I kind of keep them organized um, other than haul video. So this is Deerhoof. Matchbook Seeks Maniac and Mako Shobu. I did show this in an unboxing video recently, but not in a vinyl collection video. Uh, the Mako Shobu, forgive my Japanese, it's actually a pretty good song, but the, um, the first side or the A side, whatever, I don't even know what side's what is, um, meh, kind of boring. But, um, I literally had never heard Deerhoof before, and they're all right. I've I've kind of dug into them a little bit further, and they're okay. I don't think there's anything I would rush out and buy, but I got this for like two bucks added into an order, and it does have kind of an interesting picture disc. Um, another picture disc, Guar. This is the Record Store Day Black Friday limited edition exclusive picture disc and it's got four cover tracks get out of my dreams get in my car baba o'reilly west end girls and people who died so on that side it's got um beefcake the mighty although i know he has i don't know i i kind of lost track of guar about 20 years ago um i know after odorous died or dave brocky died um that uh Beefcake changed his name and assumed role as singer, but I don't know if he's still doing that or what's going on. And the other side is the legendary Odorous Arungus. Um, I actually saw Guar in concert, I think 2002, for Violence Has Arrived, and it was a really good show. Like, they, they really, really lived up to their expectations. Um, this is a J. Retard 7-inch that accompanied my anniversary edition of Blood Visions. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing original on here. They're just um, demos. Because uh, it didn't really say, it just said, with bonus white 7-inch. It's like, cool. Uh, it was really cheap. Um, I absolutely love J. Retard. Uh, but I think Blood Visions is about his only truly great mainstream accessible record. This, I honestly haven't even listened to it, but um, whatever. Beat Happening, Indian Summer, Foggy Eyes. This accompanied a, um, what's it called? Look Around, I believe. Uh, the compilation Best Of that was picked by the band. I do have that upstairs. Um, it's actually a really, really good compilation. You can find it for cheap. Got this. Um, both songs are on the album, so I've literally not even played this either. And another somewhat similar, this is the Birthday Party Release the Bats from the Junkyard album that I picked up not too long ago. And yeah, I believe this is just two tracks from the album. They could be demos or versions or whatever, but I'm not really sure. Nothing particularly interesting. Now this is a real big disappointment. I picked this up from someone on Discogs who clearly did not know what they were doing. Um, this is, well, this was supposed to be a Nig Heist Minutemen double seven inch collection, but I only got the Nig Heist record, which I don't really care. I don't really like Nig Heist. Like, they're, they're all right. I really wanted the Minutemen record because it's quite rare. But, um, yeah, I only got this, and I messaged the guys, like, dude, you sent me, like, half of the album, um, and he just, like, refunded me my money and never said anything, unfortunately. Um, whatever, I don't care, but I really wanted that Minutemen record. Now, I believe, yeah, I know what this is. I can't remember the name. This is another just add-in. I, I didn't really have an interest in 7 Inches until quite recently, 
Um, and then I started realizing like, you know, I can just throw these in often with an order for like two or three bucks, maybe five bucks sometimes. This is a, an artist called Whore Butcher and the album is called Fanatic. I don't know, I don't know if this is official or if this is just like a copy someone made to put in, but it literally just came with that and a white jacket and a white sleeve and white vinyl. It is just like really abrasive electronic music, nothing over the top, but I just thought, you know, again, it was like $2 to add to an order, kind of an interesting eclectic album. Times New, Times New Viking, Busy Making Love and War. I guess that's what it is. Um, I really like Times New Viking, but I think it's a very narrow window of stuff that I really enjoy by them. Uh, this album's okay. It's nothing great. Just, yeah. Um, I don't know how many tracks. Only two tracks, I guess. But whatever, it's all right. Again, it was only a couple dollars. Black Flag, Nervous Breakdown. This is actually my favorite. I know it's only like a couple tracks, but um, I actually think this is one of my favorite Black Flag releases. Um, uh, wasn't too huge on the Rollins era stuff. Some of it's okay. Damaged I like, but when it got into like the weird free jazz, punk, metal, crossover stuff. I was just like, man, you lost me on this. But um, this is okay. I think this is pretty good. These are so cheap. You can pick them up. They get pressed like once every couple of years. This should be with my fall collection, but I'm going to show it in here. Um, the fall, Roland, Danny, and Couldn't Get Ahead. Uh, it's actually pretty good. Um, there is a 12-inch, I believe, that has more. Um, like the same tracks plus a couple extra. Yeah, this is actually a pretty good fall 7-inch considering there's only a couple songs, but I know the fall have released so much, like it's hard to find out what's good, what's not good. Some of it's really obscure, some of it's expensive, some it's hard to find. DRI, the Dirty Rotten EP, this is a really good record, and I think I really lucked out. The price on this seems to have gone up quite a lot, but I picked this up for like $10 Canadian or so. Um, green Vinyl, 22 tracks, and if you're familiar with DRI, that's not difficult to fit on a 7-inch for them. I assume it's going to be a 33, though, rather, rather than a 45. Yeah, they're 33s, so it is a bit more compressed, but... Um, DRI, really cool. I, I really like some of their really early hardcore stuff, but once they crossed over into the thrash... I just really lost interest. Quicksand with a, I don't know, some kind of head that looks quite a lot like Donald Trump. Don't get political. Um, separate music and politics, in my opinion. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I had never heard this. I didn't even know this existed until very recently. And I've been listening to... Uh, quicksand for over 20 years now and uh yeah i didn't even know this existed until quite recently so i had to pick it up yeah kind of disappointed by it but whatever i've got it now, this is kind of funny this is definitely an inside joke this is the dudes i am the dudes now the reason i got this is because i actually have a very good friend from high school who has had the nickname dudes for about three decades since he was a little kid and um, I just stumbled upon this completely at random. I think it came up on Discogs as like, you might like this because you looked at this. And I sent him a message and I showed him a screenshot of the album and he couldn't believe it. He'd never heard anyone with the name Dudes before. And um, I finally found a copy for cheap and uh, I picked it up and he sent me a message and he's like, how is it? And I was like, don't worry, we're still friends, because it's a pretty crappy record. Um, I couldn't even find this on YouTube. I couldn't find any sort of MP3, any file anywhere other than this record. Okay, second box. Oh, I did show that one, so I'm going to skip it. It's a Swan's uh, New Mind Flexi Square 7-inch, which is kind of cool. 
Green Jelly, Three Little Pigs with Electric Harley House on the B side. Um, I don't know if this is just a promo version or whatever, but um, I don't believe uh, it, or the sleeve is missing. I'm not really sure which way, but I got this for a couple bucks. I really like Green Jelly. I've been listening to them like way over 20 years now um, since Serial Killer came out. And, um, you know, their vinyl's way too hard to find. So I thought this would be, you know, the best as I can get. Um, you know what? I'm going to save that because I do have more records from one of those artists. All Time Religion. This is... Sabretooth Tiger, I believe. Um, I like Old Time Religion, but a lot of their vinyl's just too hard to find or too expensive. Um, to pick up online. Really good uh, lo-fi, noise rock, indie band, um, K Records. I've got a few albums that I really like, but only one that I have, like on t like a 12-inch um, an LP. Um, I did show this in a vinyl collect or a vinyl unboxing. This is Bucket Full of Teeth 3. Um, I'd never heard of them, and again, it was just something someone had for like three dollars, and it's kind of got a really cool, um, translucent, it is actually translucent, you can't really tell. It's kind of like cloudy marbled. Um, it's kind of like experimental metal from the late 90s, meaning that it's not really that experimental by today's standards. Um, it's okay, but I find it really generic, and it's nothing overly special, but the vinyl looks pretty cool. Hood Rat is actually a, a local band from, I believe, Oakville, which is not too far from where I live. Um, and this is one of the earliest records I ever bought. This would have been probably about 98, 98-ish that I picked this up. Um, because they played a concert in my backyard, in my parents' backyard. Um, my friends who were into punk rock organized a concert. That's actually their set list. I stole that from the band. Um, and yeah, my parents went out for the night and they said I could have a concert in the backyard. And a buddy of mine who was like really into punk music organized the whole thing. I didn't really have to do much. And it turned out to be really fun. There weren't that many people because I'm from a really small town, but um, it was really cool. They got some local exposure. Uh, you know, they got some money for gas. They sold some merchandise. Um, this I actually got for free. I wouldn't buy anything like this. It's a novelty Monty Python and Stephen Hawking record, um, the Galaxy Song. Uh, it was literally thrown into an order I got for free, um, which is interesting because it's actually selling for, you know, $15 Canadian or something on Discogs. You know what, I'm going to save that as well. My friend gave me this way back in high school before I even really started collecting vinyl. Uh, this is Deftones uh, Seven Words with Teething as the B-side. Now, um, a friend of mine who definitely had very similar taste as me, nice blue vinyl. Uh, he knew that I loved the song Teething. It was only available, I believe, on, there was some soundtrack, like the Crow soundtrack or something, or like Escape from New York or something. I can't remember, but Teething was on a, um, a soundtrack by Def, like Deftones Teething was on their soundtrack and I loved it, absolutely loved it and my friend knew that I liked it a lot and he found this for like two dollars or something in a cutout bin and um, he picked it up for me. Unfortunately it has a lot of cover damage it as it appears as if um, it was peeled off of another record over the years which I'm pretty sure was probably me back in the day. But yeah, he picked this up and just gave it to me and now it's quite rare. Um, but pretty cool. So yeah, one of the earliest records. I didn't buy it. He gave it to me, but probably gave me this probably about 20 years ago or close to that. Ariel Pink, Round and Around single. Um, I think, in my opinion, one of the most striking covers ever. Um, Ariel Pink uh, drew this. He draws a lot of very weird, like, 
human animal eroticism um, bestiality basically I don't know why but the, I don't know I just find the album cover to be so striking like just very very bizarre controversial but um, that's pretty much why I bought it um, as strange as that kind of sounds but um, Round and Around is a fabulous song I think it was one of the best songs of the year uh, I can't remember what year it was from like 2012 or 11 I think but um, yeah, the B-side isn't even that great, Mistaken Wedding, but yeah, I definitely picked that up for the cover. Residence, I did show this in another video. Uh, Zip Code Rapists, um, Greg Turkington, aka Neil Hamburger. Uh, Greg Turkington is, you know, a very interesting musician, artist, whatever, um, who's been in a lot of projects over a very, very long time. Uh, some going back, I believe, to the early 80s. Uh, and this one is definitely an interesting one. Um, just kind of like weird, I don't know, alternative rock music, indie rock music. Um, this is from 91. 91? It's got to be at least 91. 91 or 92. Um, I can't say I'm overly familiar with this. Um, I do have one other Zip Code Rapists albums. Uh, 12 inch LP. I don't remember the name of it. The Three Doctors, I believe, or something. I can't remember. Which is basically a band that he was in. Um, Meat Shits. Uh, porno core, like grind core. Very weird. They've had a lot of different phases. Some of it kind of like really iffy. Some kind of like semi Nazi like anti-gay era, but this is their early era that was um, their porno core era. Um, yeah, I'm not going to dabble with the, uh, their, uh, their later stuff, but this is an interesting album. If you're into grindcore, I, I don't know, a lot of people really hate meat shits. I don't know if it's because their later association with, you know, various movements that are very questionable or if it's just they don't like their music. Bowel Rot, um, Final Exit, this is called, by the way. Bowel Rot, um, which is kind of like a holy grail for me. Uh, I think it's an amazing record. Like, if you're into, like, lo-fi grindcore, um, it's just, it's so insanely rare. Um, I'll probably never find it, but um, they do have some interesting albums. Kittens. Hawaii, um, I mentioned Kittens in my Ken Mode album, or collection, uh, they're a very iconic Canadian indie metal band, um, they've got a modest but very devout local cult following, um, in the early 90s they were, like, really well known in that kind of, you know, underground metal scene, Tape residue, and um, this is Hawaii, uh, a Japanese pressing without a custom, I believe it's called, or denied a custom, or something like that. Um, yeah, denied a custom, um, and yeah, the it's kind of known for all the inserts and stuff that you get with their records. There's a couple in here about, like, animal rights, PETA, and stuff. Um, then, yeah, something in Japanese about a hippie commune headquarters. And then another little insert here. Oh, it's actually signed. That's kind of nice. Didn't even realize that. Another little insert, but yeah. Um, honestly, everything on here except the track Hawaii is available on other uh, another kitten's record. So um, I just got it more for the aesthetic, just to get it because the cover is pretty cool as well. A couple more here. Let's do them quickly. Dead Kennedys, too drunk to fuck. Uh, really good song. I don't remember what's on the B side. The Prey and Bleed For Me, which I honestly can't say I'm familiar with at all. This is actually a really early pressing. 
I believe it's like the first Canadian pressing or something like that um, from the 80s, which is pretty cool. That was a little bit expensive, but nothing outrageous. Tomahawk Stone Letter. Actually, this uh, album was pretty decent, I thought. Um, the album that it's taken from, which escapes me at the moment. But, um, I, yeah, I thought Tomahawk, uh, they're kind of all over the place, in my opinion. But the album that this single was taken from was all right. And a Strokes single, All the Time. Uh, nothing great. Uh, I like the Strokes' first two albums, and then they kind of really went off the tracks from there. And I think this is from the later era that I don't really like. But again, this was like, I don't know, three bucks or something. So just added it in. So there you go, 20 minutes of 7-inch records. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other stuff, and I will have some more album, uh, more vinyl collection up for you again soon.